Today I will be doing a demonstration of a meditation technique that I discussed in a much earlier broadcast, which is designed to have recall of contact experiences with what most people refer to as extraterrestrials, but what I am now referring to as intermediate angels and I will explain that in a separate broadcast to follow this one. I apologize for not having um, broadcasted in, in a while. I have been fairly busy working on various projects. I completed a, or almost completed, an extensive multilingual glossary dealing with a variety of terms in religion, in sociology and sociological theory and other subjects, but that is not really relevant to the point of this broadcast. So um, what I will be doing now is uh, laying down and practicing the technique out loud and I'll see what happens. You will hear me as I'm doing it. I will try to be as clear and coherent as possible. So, here goes. There may be some periods of dead air as I do this because um, I'm just in the process of trying to get myself now into a very relaxed state where I can focus more intently on the information I want to have about this particular event. Essentially, this is a kind of self-hypnosis in a way, or self-hypnosis perhaps combined with meditation, where I will be asking myself a series of questions and then waiting inwardly to see what kind of answers I get. And when I get those answers, I will say them, and again I apologize, but as I said there may be some periods of dead air over the course of uh, this broadcast. So I feel now that I've gotten myself into a fairly good receptive state that will increase as I go through this process. My quality of speech may deteriorate, meaning I may begin to stammer or to talk rapidly. So again, um, hopefully I will be clear enough so that people can make sense out of what I'm saying. first question I'm going to ask inwardly is, who was that being that came to me last week, last Tuesday morning, I believe? The answer I'm getting is that uh, he was a being who originated somewhere in Alpha Centauri. His name on Earth is Brennan. He lives here, although he is not exactly 
the same as uh, we are in the sense of uh, strictly speaking homo sapien sapien he looks pretty much like us and is fairly indistinguishable from what we would consider to be a modern human being. Brennan is uh, approximately 35 years old. He is tall with uh, blonde hair, blue eyes, He is a very caring and loving being. He has apparently been interacting with me for quite some time. My impression is that he, he came to me at least last week while I was asleep and I had some intensive interaction with him I can recall sitting across a table from him a, a large rectangular table having an extended conversation with him where he was explaining what he was about to do and I was extraordinarily grateful for the event Before I woke up, I recall that he had me lay down in bed and go to sleep. I was in a very deep sleep. when he walked into my room, my bedroom, at that point I did not see him, but I heard the sound of his voice where he said, uh-oh. bumped my bed. Now, in my bedroom, that would have been a difficult thing to do, to accidentally walk into my bed while I was sleeping because I keep the light on. light right near the entrance to my to my bedroom was on so he could not have failed to see it I immediately woke up but I thought at first that I was having dream. In fact, I was on a craft with Brennan sitting across the table from him for 
much of the night. Eventually, after about a minute or so, it occurred to me that maybe it wasn't actually a dream. Maybe I was robbed. I have a security alarm system in my apartment which notifies the police if if I don't press in my PIN number in time. But I had been leaving it turned off. I just haven't been using it. And the front door was unlocked as well. So it never really occurred to me that, that anything otherwise than somebody walked into my bedroom, saw that someone was there, said, uh-oh, and ran out. When I got up, I looked around to see if anything was taken really didn't make much sense to me since I did not hear the front door close after the event, but I noticed that my keys, which hang from a push pin in the wall, were gone. Intriguingly, my wallet, which was one inch or less below the keys was still there. Very odd. I spent the day looking for the keys, but for some reason I was not particularly anxious or upset. I did not feel violated. Compared to that, about 15 years ago, I was robbed while I was on vacation. I came home, the front door was open, and a VCR and a bottle of coins were taken, and I was frantic. But for some reason, I was not upset this time. I now realize that Brennan had calmed me down on the craft and told me exactly what would happen. So I, I had no reason to be upset. And apparently that those comments that Brendan had made to me stayed with me even though I had no conscious recollection of what I am talking about right now. After I didn't find the keys, the following day I went and I spoke with my resident manager, the assistant resident manager, Dana, and I f told her I felt kind of foolish about going and making a police report on the event. It, it was just so odd, the whole thing. My wallet was still there, I didn't hear the front door close. But she thought I should. I followed her advice. Police officer came initially. He was very professional, but I started joking with him and 
then we seem to have a kind of, I guess, male bonding we got along quite well. He had me write out a report on a form of what had happened to me, pretty much what I just said, without the information which I did not have about the um, circumstances. That night, I made sure that the door was locked, the alarm was on, I went to bed. When I woke up the following morning, the keys were hanging from a push pin on the wall. Not the same push pin, but one kind of right near it, right next to a set of scissors that I had used several times the previous day. I was exhilarated. I thought, my goodness, I had a contact experience, one that I can actually point to some type of physical anomaly. My initial thought was that I was actually robbed. And then the the angel, so-called so-called extraterrestrial, had located my keys and returned them to me. But upon further reflection, I concluded that the whole event was planned by the, the intermediate angel, by Brennan, that he had done the entire thing as a way to warn me to keep my door locked with the security system turned on. The next day, when I got home from work, I saw that the welcome mat to my apartment had been pushed off to the side. That's rather odd. I don't know if that means that perhaps that time someone did try to break into my apartment. That was my initial thought, but that might not be true. That might not be accurate. Regardless, I think that was a very good warning. So that was my experience. I was initially considering going to see a hypnotist but now I don't think that's necessary. I think that this technique that I have practiced seems to have retrieved the information from me, so um, you can go back in the archives of uh, the YouTube archives for, for this channel and find uh, that that uh, program I did on um, a technique for recalling contact experiences. It's basically what I just did. Give me one moment and I will get out of uh, my state of suggestibility and come back um, to a state of uh, full Eco awareness. Give me one second. I'm going to count down from ten to one. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and 
one. Well, that was my experience. Um, I don't know what to make of it. Hopefully it has some significance. Um, as it turned out, I ended up explaining the whole situation um, in, uh, in this program, so there's no need, at least not at this point, for a supplemental program. Until next time, this is Dr. Mark A. Foster. Have a good one.